Hello, welcome. In this part of the lecture, we are continuing our study of coordinates of vectors in a vector space. Let's recall the example 12.1.1. In this example, we found the coordinate matrices of the vector V with components 1, 2, 3, in the vector space R3 relative to the following ordered bases for R3. S, which is the standard basis for R3, and another basis B, which is a non-standard basis for R3. To calculate the coordinate matrix of the vector V, relative to the basis B, at some stage we obtained the matrix equation 1. And we solved this equation by applying the Gauss-Jordan elimination process to the augmented matrix of equation 1. And we obtained the coordinate matrix of the vector V relative to the basis B is a column matrix with entries 3, negative 4, 2. So if we replace the column of the unknowns by this column of solutions, we get the equation 1 satisfied. From this equations 1 and 2 in example 12.1.1, we observe that if we multiply the coordinate matrix of the vector V relative to the basis B by some matrix we get the coordinate matrix of the vector V relative to the standard basis. This matrix, denoted by this symbol, is called the transition matrix from the basis B to the basis S. Multiplication by the transition matrix changes a coordinate matrix relative to the basis B into a coordinate matrix relative to the basis S, as shown in this equation. We can generalize this idea. Assume that B is a set of vectors and B prime is another set of vectors or two ordered bases for a vector space V. Then the transition matrix P from B prime to B is a matrix such that it satisfies this equation. Namely, if we multiply the coordinate matrix of a vector V in the vector space V relative to the basis B prime by the transition matrix P from B prime to B, we get the coordinate matrix of the same vector V relative to the basis B. The next theorem tells us that the transition matrix 
P from the basis B prime to the basis B is invertible and its inverse is the transition matrix from the basis B to the basis B prime. Before we prove the theorem, we need to prove the following lemma. Let B and B prime are two ordered bases for a vector space V. Suppose the vector U sub 1 has the following representation, meaning that since U sub 1 is in the vector space V and B prime is a basis for the vector space V, then U sub 1 can be written uniquely as a linear combination of the vectors in B prime as shown here. We note that by definition the coordinate matrix of the vector u sub 1 relative to the basis B prime is in fact the collection of this coefficients written vertically in a column form. Similarly, in the case of u sub 2 all the way up to u sub n. Then the transition matrix P from B to B prime is given by this matrix where we observe that the first column of this transition matrix P from B to B prime is in fact the coordinate matrix of the vector u sub 1 in the basis B relative to the basis B prime. Similarly, the second column in the transition matrix is the coordinate matrix of the second vector in the ordered basis B relative to the ordered basis B prime and so on. We are now ready to state the theorem formally. If P is a transition matrix from the basis B to the basis B prime for a vector space V, then it is invertible. And the transition matrix from the basis B prime to B is given by the inverse of that matrix. I highly recommend you to pause the video and read the proof. In this example, we're going to show the procedure for finding the transition matrix from a basis to another basis for a given vector space. Let's try to find the transition matrix from the basis B to B prime for the R2 space, where B is the basis shown here and B prime is the basis shown here. Let's have a look at the solution. As mentioned in the previous lemma, we consider the following equation. By definition, the coordinate matrix of the vector 
u sub 1 relative to the basis b prime would be the column matrix with entries c sub 1 1 c sub 2 1 If we replace the vector v sub 1 by this vector and v sub 2 by this, we get this matrix equation as written in equation 1. Similarly, if we want to express the vector u sub 2 as a linear combination of the vectors in the basis b prime we consider this equation and by replacing the vectors v sub 1 and v sub 2 from the basis b prime we get a matrix equation as written in equation 2 now equations 1 and 2 can be put into the following matrix equation. We observe here the matrix is in fact the transition matrix P from the basis B to B prime. In order to solve equation 3 for this matrix we begin by forming the matrix and use the ghost jordan elimination process to obtain the transition matrix as shown in equation 3. The details follow. So in the left half of this augmented matrix we put the basis B prime and in the right half of this augmented matrix we put the vectors from the basis B and by a sequential application of the elementary row operations we get the transition matrix P from the basis B to B prime In this example, we want to apply the transition matrix we just obtained in example 12.2.1 to calculate the coordinate matrix of a vector whose coordinate matrix relative to the basis B is shown here relative to the basis B prime. If we use this equation, we can find the coordinate matrix of the vector V relative to the basis B prime. So we see a vector whose coordinate matrix relative to the basis B has entries 5, 4. The same vector has coordinate matrix relative to the basis B prime is 3, 2. Recall that the basis B consists of the vectors 1, 0 and 0, 1 which are shown in this figure as u and v. We have a point in the plane R2 whose coordinates are 5, 4 relative to the basis B. Now if we have another basis B prime consisting of the vectors 1, 0 
and 1, 2. We want to calculate the coordinates of the point P relative to the basis B prime. And we obtained the coordinates of the point P relative to the basis B prime are 3, 2, as shown in the following figure. So we see that the point P has the coordinates 3, 2. Let's try another example. In part A of this problem, we want to find the transition matrix from the basis B to B prime, where B and B prime are consisting of vectors as shown. These two are bases for the vector space R3. And in the next part of this problem, we want to find the coordinate matrix of the vector V relative to the basis B prime, whose coordinate matrix relative to the basis B is given as shown. Following the procedure we discussed in example 12.2.1, we begin by forming the following augmented matrix. In the left half of this augmented matrix, we put the vectors from the basis B prime, and in the right half of this augmented matrix, we put the vectors from the basis B and by start reducing this augmented matrix to the reduced echelon form, we finally obtain this matrix where the right half of this augmented matrix gives us the transition matrix P from the basis B to B prime. Now, to calculate the coordinate matrix of the vector V relative to the basis B prime, we need to multiply the coordinate matrix of the vector V relative to the basis B by the matrix P the transition matrix from the basis B to B prime. So we obtain this coordinate matrix with entries negative 5, 4, 7. In the next example, we want to find the transition matrix from the basis S to B if S and B are given as the ordered basis for the vector space P sub 2. And in the next part of the problem, we want to find the coordinate matrix of the polynomial P of X equals negative 6 X squared plus X minus 3 relative to the basis B. Please study the solution given in the lecture note. With this, we end part 2 of the lecture 12. Thank you.